Hey guys, Greg Benz here, and today I'll show you how in three easy steps you can combine multiple wide angle shots like this into a much broader panorama like this, something that captures the expansiveness of a cavernous space like this or some other broad shot that you could try and shoot with a fisheye, but a fisheye won't necessarily give you the same breadth that you can capture by creating a panorama. And even if it does, with the distortions in a fisheye and the cropping of pixels, you often end up with an inferior result to what you can get by stitching multiple images. So let's take a look at how this is constructed first, just by looking at the raw images. Each of these images is part of a row where the camera is oriented vertically. So you can see I have row one going across and then row two going up, row three a little bit higher, row four even higher. So I just spun the camera shooting images working rather quickly to try and capture in consistent light. Now you might ask, why so many images? Take a look at how much distortion we have. This opening right here it looks very big, and then as we move it towards the center, it gets quite small. So there's substantial distortion in a wide angle lens. You really need a lot of overlap. I'm not saying you necessarily need 38 images like I used here, because I don't know the exact limit of what I can get away with, because I don't do this frequently enough, and quite frankly, it's not worth my time to try and perfect that process when I don't do this quite as often. But I can tell you, you can't push it too far. I tried to remove one of these rows. I thought visually it'd be okay, and the panorama failed. So you really do need a lot of overlap to make this work. Of course, if you're willing to put in the time, you should also look at other software solutions beyond what I'll show you in Photoshop, because you can take things a little bit further, but this is gonna be about how you can create a really nice result easily, something that's gonna work for most people most of the time. Now, with each of these images, I of course have processed the raw file. So if we hit D over to the develop module, I have made changes, for example, in the basic panel and other parts of Lightroom. What's really important here is that within lens corrections, I have enabled profile corrections to get rid of distortion and vignetting because we're gonna overlap the images. I wanna make sure they align as well as possible and don't have dark corners. We could address this over in Photoshop. I just prefer to do it at the raw stage. So once you've done this, we're ready for step one, which is select all the images. I'm just hitting Command A to select the images, right click, and then choose Edit In, Merge to Panorama in Photoshop. Photoshop will automatically open the Photo Merge dialog where all of your images are already selected. What you need to know is the options down below should look like this. You want to blend your images, we do not need the vignette or geometric corrections because we've already done that in Lightroom. And I'm not gonna use content aware fill. We could do that later if we need to, but if you shot wide enough, you shouldn't need this. Then just click okay. And be prepared for this to take a while. This particular merge took 23 minutes for Photoshop to complete. Once the merge is complete, you'll have something like this. You can safely ignore these white lines. If you zoom in a few levels, notice that they're gone. It's just an artifact of the way that the layers are being presented to you, but it is a good idea to zoom in and just look for any edge issues, scroll around the image. Once you're okay with things, you're ready for step two of the process, which is to take all of these layers and turn them into a single layer so we can correct the distortions in this image. To do that, just shift click down to the bottom layer so everything is selected. Then you can right click and you have a few options built into Photoshop. The first is to flatten the image into a single pixel layer. The benefit of this approach is you have a, fall, a small file that will open and close quickly and can be viewed in Lightroom. However, you lose the ability to make changes. So if there's any problem in this merge, your ability to go back and correct it later is going to be restricted. It's going to take more work to fix any issues with the edges here if things aren't perfect. Your next option is to convert to a smart object it gives you the ability to go back and make changes to the underlying image at any time, which is great, but it does make for a very large file, which is gonna force you away from formats that work with Lightroom, meaning that you cannot see the image in Lightroom, and the file is gonna take some time to open and close. My preferred option, if you have Lumenzia, is actually to go up and in the menu of Lumenzia, we have this option to convert layers to linked PSB, and when you choose this, just choose all layers, it will actually put everything in a PSB document separate from the main TIFF, which gives you the ability to open and close the file very quickly, about five seconds instead of a minute and a half for this image. And it also will be viewable in Lightroom. But I'm gonna skip it here and stick with options that are built into Photoshop 
the best option for this, I believe, is to convert to a smart object. Once you've converted to a smart object or flattened the image, notice how all those little white lines go away because they weren't real. That was just a preview based on the layers. Now that we're looking at the flattened image, it looks correct. We're now ready for the third step in the process, which is to select the layer and then go up to Filter, Adaptive Wide Angle. This will give us the tools to warp the image into its proper perspective. Now the Adaptive Wide Angle tool does not have a lot of options. There is going to be a correction option here where it should say panorama by default, and that's what you're going to want most of the time, but that will choose the type of correction. There's a scale option. I would leave this at 100% because it will actually resample your image if you use another value. So leave it, even if the preview doesn't fill the screen, just leave it alone here because it will change the output in your pixels. And then on the left here are a few different tools. The first two are really what this tool is all about. This first one, Constraint Tool, will allow you to draw lines that should be straight in the image. That's the one we'll use. And there is the Polygon Constraint Tool where you can draw out some sort of like a rectangle type shape for things like architectural images where you're trying to fix a building. Lastly, there's a few different adjustment tools here which just simply allow you to zoom in and move around the preview here because whatever you're previewing right here is what will be output in the uh, layer when you're done with the tool. So if it's getting cropped off of the edges, you'll certainly want to make sure that key content is staying in the view here. Lastly, notice this little detail box as I move around the image is showing the cursor's precise location, very helpful for doing close work and getting more accurate results. So let's begin. We want to draw some straight lines to redefine this image. The only place in this scene that actually has a straight line is this horizon. It's currently curved and sloping down and to the right. So with the straight constraint control set, we want to go and click on one far edge of the horizon here. And then just with a mouse held down, slide over to the far right. Now notice as I drag this out, I'm getting this curved line. So what's happening is that the adaptive wide angle tool is trying to find the contours in the image and automatically help you straighten them. So it's doing the heavy lifting. You just have to identify what you want to straighten. In this case, it'll be the other edge of this horizon line. So I'll let go over here and the tool has already straightened that edge. Notice it's no longer curved, it's perfectly straight, but of course it's not level. If you hover over the edge of this, you can click and drag to rotate this particular line or hold down the shift key and when you click, it will automatically move it to the closest horizontal or vertical line, which is exactly what we need here for this horizon. So that's perfect. This is done. Now we need to go on to correct the other parts of the image and this is more of an open-ended process now. It's more artistic. I could edit this image five times and get five slightly different results because there's no anchor point or reference here that's truly correct or not. It's just my perspective. But in remembering the scene, I do know that this here should be much more close to a kind of a vertical window with the bottom edge either being straight as in flat or sloping a little bit down into the right. So we need to bring this down and to the right quite a bit. That's the first thing I'll fix. To do that, I want to create some kind of a reference that makes sense to me. And in this case, it's whatever should be in kind of a straight line beneath it, and then I'll rotate down and to the right. So I'm going to click and drag here to create sort of a baseline anchoring you know, along this line, which I think should be relatively straight in the image. And now I can click and drag on this circle to rotate this content. And when I let go, it's pulling this to the right down into the right here. So I'm going to do that again. I'm going to click and drag and go further because I didn't do it enough yet. And that looks pretty good. This is now pretty vertical with the bottom edge sloping a little down to the right. That looks like my memory of the location. Now notice that this line is not perfectly level. I didn't bring it all the way to zero degree angle because that would be too much. So you only want to use the shift key on lines like this that are going to be perfectly horizontal or vertical. Now at this point, I could simply crop in in this area and call it done, but I think that this top edge of this window here should move a little bit to the left. So to do that, I can draw a line over here and rotate it down and left. If I draw a large line that comes down here, what's happening is that this edge of this constraint is starting to pull on these pixels. And when I rotate this to move this window out, notice how much I've affected this window. I'm starting to cause problems over here because I've over constrained the image. I don't want to adjust these pixels. I should leave them alone. So I'm going to hit delete and get rid of the last thing I did there, that last active adjustment. And instead, let's draw another line, but let's only draw it around the area we want to affect, just up top here. 
And now I'm gonna bring this down and notice that it's not affecting this window nearly as much. It's just bringing this left like I wanted. And I might go even a little bit further. And I think that looks pretty good. I like the overall result. Of course, there's a lot of additional space in this view that's not useful. Sometimes you fill the frame, sometimes you don't. So we're gonna to have to optionally go on to correct the image beyond this, but this looks pretty good. I could, at this point, click the Move tool and move things around if I was trying to preserve some piece of content that's going outside the window. Whatever you're seeing in this window is exactly what will be output. So make sure you're not cropping anything off you're going to need. Otherwise, it's fine. Don't use this scaling factor here because it will actually resample your pixels and you'd be better off to control that process separately later. If you like the results, go ahead and click OK. Just keep in mind if you're not using a smart object that you are making a permanent change. You can see that it output exactly what we were previewing a minute ago. Obviously, this is not exactly what we want, so we're gonna crop this image. If you want to do content aware fill on little areas like this, of course, you can do that after cropping. I don't think we'll need to in this case. So let's click on the crop tool, draw a rough crop here around the areas I care about. And now we're just going to refine the edge of this until it looks like the crop that we want. And I think that's about right. Notice that I don't have anything that's quite out of the edges here, but if I did have some transparent pixels come in on the edge, that'd be fine. We could use a content aware fill on a rasterized copy of this layer to fix that if we needed to. But I'm just gonna crop this. And now we've got a great wide angle view. You can go on to process this using all the normal techniques you would as with any other image. And if you need to adjust this, you can of course double click into the smart object to go and correct the original blending if there's some issue at one of the edges, or you can double click into the adaptive wide angle in order to continue refining how you warp those pixels. So you have full flexibility if you use a smart object. If you've enjoyed this video, be sure to click subscribe to be notified as I continue to release new Photoshop tutorials.